It's time to reveal my best suburbs for 2023 when you're purchasing in the greater Brisbane market. We're gonna be covering across multiple councils, looking at price ranges as low as $500,000 up to about $1.5 million. We're gonna be looking north, south, and on the Bayside and talking through these opportunities and why they might be a great buy in 2023. Now, my name's Luke and I run a buyer's agency called Purpose Property here in Brisbane. Head over to purposeproperty.com.au if you're looking to book an agency free strategy session with myself. Otherwise, drop a like on this video and subscribe down below and let's dive straight into the suburbs today. To kick off my list, we're going to be looking at two suburbs on Brisbane's north side. These locations are roughly about 14 to 15 kilometers from Brisbane CBD, and they're Bridgman Downs and Aspley. Now these suburbs haven't been talked about a whole lot. The suburbs a little bit further south in Chermside, McDowell, Geebung, and Kedron have received a lot of love over the last few years. Whereas Aspley and Bridgman Downs, just that little bit further out, haven't necessarily had the same level of hype. The reason I like these suburbs is they sit in between Brisbane City Council and Moreton Bay Regional Council. They're more of the outer suburbs on the Brisbane CBD ring. They're one or two suburbs away from train line locations, and they're also close to the Westfield Shopping Centre at Chermside. These are family friendly suburbs with quiet streets, and that's exactly what I'd be looking for in these pockets. You want a minimum of a three bedroom home on at least 600 square meters in a quiet street that has that owner occupier appeal. You could also find a renovator in these locations where you could add value, and there's quite a large disparity between renovated and unrenovated homes. For example, three Betters in these suburbs could go for as low as say 700,000, but renovated they could go for 850 all the way up to 1.1 million. It comes down to the land size, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, and the fit out of the property at the end of the day, but I believe there's good potential buying in these locations if you can find an undervalued opportunity and you can get a property with that cosmetic renovation potential. The median price point in Aspley at the moment is 955,000, but like I said, you can still pick up deals in the low 700s when you're looking at a renovator. Hot suburb number two on my list is a lower price point suburb. We're talking sub $500,000 with a large parcel of land, and that is Marsden. Now, Marsden is located in Logan City Council, in the heart of established suburbs that have been built out in Logan City Council for around about 30 years. Now, even though it is lower socioeconomic, you can get access to large parcels of land. We're talking seven, 800, 1,000 square meter plus blocks. And what this means is you can look at dual occupancy strategies in these locations or even full on subdivisions, buying at that half a million dollar price point. Marsden is conveniently placed between Brisbane and the Gold Coast, situated just a short drive away from the Logan Motorway. This allows you access also out to Ipswich, and so you can go north to Brisbane, south to the Gold Coast, or west out to Ipswich, which means it can access multiple working hubs. It's a very family friendly area and it has a fair amount of parks, shops and recreational activities available. It's also only a 10 minute drive to Logan Hospital, which is the largest hospital in Logan City Council. It's actually where I ended up having leg surgery when I broke my leg at 16 years old. So I'd have to say having the hospital close by is not necessarily a bad thing. The median house price sits around that $530,000 at this point in time, and generally has a lot of blue collar workers living in the suburb. The reason I like the opportunities in Marsden is because of that value add potential. You can get access to dual occupancy opportunities at an affordable price point. For example, you can buy a house for $530,000 on a really large block and you don't have to necessarily pull a lever to do a subdivision or add a granny flat straight away. You could hold that property for three, five, 10 years plus and then look to add the value to the property by taking on that subdivision or adding that granny flat at a later point in time. This would allow you to access short-term value by doing a cosmetic renovation and then in say five years time, pull another lever to add value by doing a granny flat or a subdivision. So that's enough about Marsden, let's move on to the next suburb. The next suburb on my list is Cleveland. Now Cleveland has historically had a lower reputation, but in recent times it's continued to gentrify and money has continued to push out to the Bayside. Cleveland is the last stop on the Eastern train line running from Brisbane CBD all the way out to Cleveland Station. Now it has a local state high school, but it's also a short drive to Ormiston State College, which is a private school 
with premier academic results and also a wide range of sporting facilities and cultural activities. So in terms of the education, the access to lifestyle opportunities, close to Rabi Bay, which has very expensive homes, at the end of the train line on the way into Brisbane, it means as a suburb, there's a lot of things going for Cleveland. The Bayside lifestyle, the access to the schools, the access to the CBD, and it's also closely situated to Redlands Hospital. Cleveland is a hub for Redland City Council. There's also some great footy, including AFL and soccer clubs located in Cleveland. And so there's lots of opportunities for both that lifestyle and higher income earners to live in this pocket. I've also seen in recent times larger blocks come up near the water or walking distance to the bay. Now the great thing here is if you can pick up an 800 square meter block within one to two kilometers of the water, this may give you potential to do a subdivision down the track if you have enough frontage. Now even just holding a larger block tends to command a premium. Larger blocks as everyone knows typically go for a higher price point. So if you're willing to pay a premium to get into the property and if you're willing to hold that premium land for a longer period period of time, that's where you can see that capital growth compound year on year. Cleveland's definitely a suburb to keep your eye on in 2023, given all of these factors and opportunities stacking up together. Now we've chatted about the Southern Bayside, let's jump over to the Northern Bayside and have a chat about a little suburb, a couple of suburbs back from the water called Tygum. Not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly and I'm a local. Now Tygum is located between Fitzgibbon, Boondle and Deegan. And just one suburb over from Deegan is Shorncliffe in the Bayside on the north side of Brisbane. Now the reason I've selected Tygum as a potential hotspot suburb for 2023 is it has these factors going for it. It's not in a flood prone area like Deegan. Deegan is one suburb closer to the Bayside, but is a very flood prone area. Whereas Tuggum is slightly higher in terms of its location, and that means less flooded areas and more access in flooded times. The Bayside also has a lot of flooding issues. If you're looking at Shorncliffe, Sandgate or Brighton, these suburbs are located all along the water on the northern Bayside and they also are prone to flooding. Whereas Tuggum is only a short drive out to the Bayside on the weekend when you actually want to use the water and hang out there for activities. But it also has the train line at North Boonal Station nearby to allow people to access the CBD and also allow you to access the Bayside. The median price point in this suburb at this point in time is $815,000 and it's grown 22% in the recent boom period. Period. Again, you want to be looking for properties on at least 600 square meters in a nice, quiet, family-friendly street with that value add potential. Whether you want to do a renovation straight away or down the track, this suburb is that family-friendly feel at the starting area of a blue chip price point. All right, now it's not time to mess around. Let's give you a much higher price point suburb that I think is good buying and good lifestyle. This is a suburb called Ashgrove and it's located just on the inner northwestern corridor of Brisbane CBD. This area has gyms, cafes, restaurants, parklands, social sporting activities, it's got it all, all located close to Brisbane CBD. One of the great things about Ashgrove is it has its own suburb and its own feel, but it also gets access to areas like Paddington, Barden, Red Hill, Kelvin Grove, where you've got the universities, you've got the pubs, you've got that lifestyle. And so Ashgrove has that more suburban feel for families, but also you can creep in that little bit closer to the city, head down to Suncorp, enjoy your weekends and get access to a whole range of food, lifestyle, entertainment. It has it all. Now you're gonna be looking at a medium price point around that 1.5 four or five million dollars and it has shot up a lot in recent times. Inogra Creek also runs through the middle of the suburb and that means there's also a lot of sporting facilities and parklands located through the heart of the suburb as well. You want to be aware of Waterworks Road during peak hours because that's where traffic can back up and you'd also want to buy a property that is in one of those quiet streets. I know I say that about every suburb but it's a key criteria when it comes to buying a property with owner occupier appeal. I generally want a property with a nice wide frontage and ideally you want the property elevated as well. So if you're looking for a very blue chip suburb, only a few kilometers from Brisbane CBD with that suburb like feel, but also access to those real inner city CBD suburbs, then Ashgrove is my pick in 2023. 
And you've made it this far and we're revealing my last suburb on today's list when it comes to hotspot suburbs for 2023. We've gone through some middle range suburbs at that 800 and 900K price point. We've looked at a suburb around that half a million dollar mark and up at $1.5 million. So I thought it would be fitting to finish in a suburb that sits somewhere in the middle. And we're gonna give a little bit of love to the West. I typically talk about Northern suburbs, Southern suburbs and Brisbane Bayside and shun the Western suburbs because there's a large amount of land supply out and towards Ipswich, out and towards the south side of Logan City Council and Moreton Bay Regional Council, where those big land developers like Landlease and Metricon are doing a lot of new builds. But the suburb I've picked is very established and runs around that medium price point here in Brisbane at $935,000 for the average home. And this suburb is called Jindalee. Jindalee is located near the river on the western corridor of Brisbane. It's seen 19% growth in this boom period in the last 12 months, and it's also landlocked given the river and given the suburbs nearby. Now you need to be aware of the Western Freeway and how congested it can get during those peak hour periods when people are trying to get to the city and get home in the afternoons. But if you can live with the traffic or if you pay for the tolls, if you want that express speed, then Jindalee has a lot going for it. It's got access to the water. It's got large shopping precincts. It's got big gyms. It's also got that leafy lifestyle. When it comes to living in Jindalee, you've got that little bit of tree change. It feels a bit greener, it feels a bit leafier, and so families who are looking for a little bit of a quieter lifestyle typically head into these pockets around Fig Tree Pocket, around Chapel Hill, and out further towards Jindalee and Mount Omni. Again, it is a suburban suburb, and so you won't find vast plots of land on acreages. It's not like that. It's still a suburban suburb with houses on 600 square meters, but it's got that feel of a leafy and green area. For me, these properties priced in that $700 to $1 million bracket are a balance between cash flow and capital growth. When you're looking at the $1.5 million suburbs, you're really focusing on blue chip and you're not very worried about yield. And when you're looking at that lower 500K price point suburbs, you're more focused on the yield. So when we're talking about suburbs like Jindalee, you're looking for that balance between cash flow and growth. And so you'd ideally get something like a four to a 5% gross yield. And then you also want the capital growth compounding based on say a $900 thousand dollar median price point. So this has been a massive breakdown of my top suburbs to look at in Brisbane in 2023. Of course, this is speculation around specific suburbs and property prices. So make sure you do your own research, look at the quantitative data, look at the qualitative data and make an informed decision when it comes to making your next property purchase. If you'd like to have a chat with myself about buying a property in the greater Brisbane market, head over to purposeproperty.com.au. If you're looking to make a purchase in the next six months, you can book in a free strategy session with myself and we'll have a chat. Otherwise, if you could drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel down below, that would really help me out and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.